In the last three lectures, we looked at the proxies of the boundary layer flow model, namely the Stefan flow model, the Kuwait flow model, and the Reynolds flow model, the last one being the algebraic model. Uh, whereas the Stefan and Kuwait flow models were one dimensional models. Now we look at the complete uh, two dimensional boundary layer flow model uh, so as to recover some ideas uh, as to why we expect the simpler models to mimic the boundary layer flow model. So in this lecture I will introduce some definitions and then of course look at the governing equations uh, and then of course uh, we will convert them to conserved property forms for all types of mass transfer problems and then uh, the main important thing is we will rec recover the boundary conditions from mass conservation principle and the energy conservation and ultimately we will show that NW is equal to GB for small and large mass transfer rates. So the definition of the boundary layer flow model is as follows. Here is a surface and this is the considered phase and this is the neighboring phase as you know. Uh, this is the interface and, and in the considered phase you have uh, there may be presence of chemical reactions, there may be presence of turbulence, uh, concentration gradients, temperature gradients and so on and so forth. Infinity state is one where all the gradients vanish. The total mass transfer, that is both convective plus diffusive mass transfer, uh, takes place at the interface from the neighboring phase. And in the deep inside the neighboring phase, we define a T state, which of course, uh, where the concentration uh, gradients and temperature gradients, as again, like infinity state, here again in the T state, they are zero, or we say that the uh, fluid properties are uniform. So convective mass transfer takes place due to uh, concentration gradients in the considered phase. Uh, and since the Reynolds flow model mimics the real flow, the interface mass flux is given uh, is NW is NW equal to GB and NW and G have the same units. NW is required as a boundary condition uh, because it, it uh, to the mass transfer equation as well as the energy equation and as well as the momentum equation because uh, uh, NW brings with it a certain velocity uh, at which the mass comes in. So assuming steady state mass transfer now you have uh, d by dx of rho m u psi plus d by dy of rho m v psi plus d by dy of gamma psi d psi by dy plus a source term where psi is any property like when it is 1 we get bulk mass equation because that term is 0 and SW is specified as 0 and that being 1 you simply get rho, d rho m u by dx plus d rho m v by dy equal to 0 and that is the bulk mass equation under steady state. If I say psi is equal to u then uh, gamma psi would be mu m effective assuming there is turbulent flow. Uh, uh, and uh, S psi would be usually minus dp by dx which is the pressure gradient. If psi is equal to omega k then uh, uh, gamma psi as you know would be rho m d effective plus a equal to uh, and source would be rk which is the species transfer equation. Then there would be the element transfer equation for which the source is always zero because element alpha is a conserved property and HM is the mixture enthalpy uh, that would have a source term comprising mass transfer due to diffusion flux M double dash YK. Uh, the source there can be other sources like DP, DT, Q rad and many other sources. Uh, these are all ignored. We also ignored the viscous dissipation uh, here and uh, all equations are coupled requiring numerical solutions. Uh, simplifications of omega k and HM equations are possible under certain assumptions so that they are rendered to a conserved property equation. We have gone over all these processes of converting uh, omega k and HM equations to conserved property forms in variety of mass transfer problems. 
So, if I write in conserved property form, the equation is simply this with S phi equal to 0, N w equal to G b and b is equal to psi infinity minus psi w uh, psi w minus psi t. Now, in inert mass transfer without heat transfer as you will recall, psi is simply omega of the vapor and gamma is rho m d the diffusivity. In inert mass transfer with heat transfer, psi equal to omega v as n uh, h m and uh, where it is an energy equation and we make use of the assumption of Lewis number equal to 1 that is gamma m h equal to rho m d plus uh, equal to rho m alpha m. Uh, in mass transfer with simple chemical reaction, we, we choose psi appropriately uh, as a combination of fuel and oxygen or fuel and product and so on and so forth and H m and uh, again make the Lewis number equal to 1 assumption and also say that the specific heats are equal that is what renders the energy equation uh, in the conserved property form. And in mass transfer with, a, with arbitrary chemical reaction of course psi uh, is again formed from appropriate combinations of eta alpha and gamma m is rho m d. In each case we need boundary conditions at y equal to 0 uh, which will come from that um, form of the, of the Reynolds flow model. So, for the inert mass transfer considered mass conservation between T and W states uh, as you will recall this is our W W state, this is T state and this is the infinity state and we specify N W here, N W here. Then uh, you will see that the mass which is coming in here is N W omega k at t and what, what is going out is n w times omega k at w and minus the diffusion mass transfer uh, which is rho m diffusivity omega k by dy at y equal to 0. So, this would be the uh, mass balance because this is the convect multiplied by omega k will be the convective transfer and diffusion transfer will be m dot k at w which is nothing but from Fick's law this is rho m diffusivity into omega k dy at y equal to 0. So, if I rearrange this equation take n w common out here then I get the form n w is equal to uh, rho, rho m d omega k dy uh, at ball divided by omega k w minus omega k at t. Likewise for any other conserved property phi I, I have the same equation as you can see here and n w will be rho m d omega phi d phi by dy at w phi w minus phi t where phi would be as you will recall omega f u minus omega o 2 divided by RST equal to omega F u plus omega product by 1 plus RST for a simple chemical reaction and phi can be any linear combination of eta alpha and you choose A alpha suitably um, for a given problem as we indicated last time. Now, we these are the these are the boundary conditions derived from mass conservation principle. Likewise, we can do so, so, for the energy equation, so for example, uh, in the energy equation, again, if I consider this to be W W and this to be T T state, then uh, uh, N W times H M T will be the flux coming in, as well as Q W will be another flux coming in. Whereas, what is going out is the convective flux N w H w plus M dot w uh, diffusion of the w k H k sigma. So, if I equate the influxes with outgoing fluxes, I would get the form which I have shown here. So, this is the incoming flux Q w is also the incoming flux which should be on this side 
and NW is equal to HMW and this is the diffusion flux of species K multiplied by the enthalpy that goes with it uh, of the species K. Now, now KM, uh, uh, sorry, QW is equal to KM dt dy because QW is shown inwards uh, and that would be equal to CPM gamma H where gamma H is rho M alpha M dt by dy at the W. And hence NW would be written as sigma K uh, gamma M d omega K by dy at WHK plus uh, CPM gamma H dt by dy at W HMW minus HMT. And this is the general uh, energy conservation principle. The final form of the numerator will depend on the mass transfer application at hand. So let us see the, what are the different forms that uh, this numerator will take uh, in different types of mass transfer problems. So in inert mass transfer with heat transfer, and if I make the assumption of Lewis number 1 as we usually do, then gamma H will be simply equal to gamma M and hence CPM D gamma H dt by dy would be gamma H into CPM is simply sigma omega k CPK into dt by dy and if I now absorb uh, CPK inside this derivative then I get a gamma H into sigma omega k dhk by dy at w and hence you will see that the numerator now reads as uh, gamma m into sigma k d omega k by dy gamma w h k plus gamma h into uh, sigma k of omega k dhk by dy at, the, at w. But since we have assumed gamma h is equal to gamma m uh, this is simply the differential, these two terms are simply differentials of a product omega k h k dy at w. Uh, summation of omega k h k is simply gamma m h d h m by dy w over h m minus h m t, h m w minus h m t. So, n w takes the same form as uh, uh, as derived from the mass conservation principle but with the uh, variable enthalpy HM. Let us see uh, the numerator when mass transfer with heat transfer and chemical, simple chemical reaction. Now here we take Lewis number equal to 1 and also say that CPK will be equal to CPM and uh, for the moment let us say delta T is, uh, stands for T minus T ref then we have uh, enthalpy of the fuel would be CPM into delta T plus omega Fu into delta Hc that is I have associated the heat of combustion with the fuel and uh, therefore HO2 and H product will be simply CPM delta T and hence uh, uh, summation of sigma uh, gamma M d omega K by dy Hk would simply amount to uh, gamma m d f u by d w uh, by dy at the wall multiplied by d h c because the other quantity c p m delta t if I substitute c p m delta t for all the three species uh, it will simply give me uh, c p m delta t gamma h into summation of d omega k by dy uh, at w equal to 0 because summation of sigma omega k is 1. Uh, and likewise CPM gamma H dt by dy would be gamma H dHm by dy at W from this relationship uh, minus gamma H dHc by uh, dFu by dy. So again you see that the addition of, the, of this term with the summation of these two terms, this one, this term and this term would amount to uh, would amount to this term will cancel with this term because gamma m is equal to gamma h uh, and therefore we get nw again is equal to gamma mh dhm by dy at w divided by hmw minus hmt. So even in simple chemical reaction uh, with these assumptions uh, of equal Lewis, uh, Lewis number equal to 1 and equal specific heats we recover the same form as we had done earlier with inert mass transfer. Uh, with heat transfer. Finally, let us look at single component convective mass transfer. Now, in this case, omega k is equal to 1, therefore, uh, this part of the numerator will be 0. 
and CPM gamma H dt by dy would be simply gamma H because I can multiply C CPM is inside this and therefore that will give me HM by dy W and hence I get NW equal to DHM by dy W uh, HMW minus HMT which is again what we had earlier. Uh, single component convective heat transfer means uh, supposing I have uh, a boundary layer formed with air I am injecting in it air itself uh, from the wall uh, at a given rate. So the energy equation uh, would take the form that I have shown here. Now if I further make the assumption that the specific heats do not vary uh, between W, T and uh, infinity states then of course I can make the assumption uh, I can show that NW will be equal to gamma H into DT by dy W divided by TW minus TT. Thus in all cases of mass transfer mass and energy conservation principles give identical formula for NW and combining uh, with Reynolds flow model which claims to mimic the real boundary layer flow model we can sh we can say that n w will be equal to gamma psi d psi by dy w over psi w minus psi t which we have just now derived uh, is equal to g times b and that must equal rho m v w. So you can see now that the momentum equations which require this quantity uh, are coupled with the uh, mass, fraction, uh, mass fraction and energy equations through these quantities. What it shows is that the the rate of mass transfer would be proportional to psi infinity minus psi w. It will also be proportional to the gradient of psi at the wall and it will be proportional to vw which is from that. This shows that even if gamma is uniform, the psi equation is non-linear, gamma is the property. Uh, so even if it was uh, uniform through the considered phase, the psi equation is non-linear because velocity field uv is a function of Vw and psi infinity minus psi w. Now this kind of coupling through the boundary conditions of momentum and uh, the mass trans scalar equations uh, uh, is akin to the natural convection problem in which u and v uh, are coupled to the energy equation through the source terms uh, we call the buoyancy term. So in natural convection momentum and energy equations are coupled through boundary con bo through buoyancy source terms uh, whereas in mass transfer the uh, the coupling arises because of the boundary condition at the wall this is the difference between a natural convection problem and a force convection mass transfer problem so the coupling between the momentum and psi equations can be ignored when nw which is proportional to vw tends to 0 which means if the mass transfer rate is very very small then we can say that uh, g star which is the value of g at uh, for small mass transfer rates then nw divided by b psi nw tends to 0 would be minus gamma psi d omega by dy psi, uh, divided by uh, w psi w minus psi infinity. Uh, this follows from the previous equation which I have shown here. So I have simply cancelled psi w minus psi t, psi w minus psi t and this is uh, psi infinity minus psi w is taken to the denominator. So you get g star is equal to this quantity. So the g star now depends only on the psi profiles uh, and not on the boundary condition because Vw is tending to 0. This definition is analogous to that used to define the heat transfer coefficient. As you will recall, we define the heat transfer coefficient as uh, minus k dt dy Tw minus T infinity. So likewise we say that the G star which is the mass transfer coefficient at Vw equal to 0 uh, is gamma minus gamma psi d psi by dy at W divided by psi w minus psi infinity. So the two definitions are now analogous and now you can see why we have been calling g as the mass transfer coefficient. When nw is large the coupling between uh, the momentum equations and the psi equation is strong and nw equal to g times b psi. 
Hence, G must be a function of B psi and G star uh, equal to G when B, B psi tends to 0. Yes, G star is, uh, is simply G where, uh, with B psi signing to 0. But it would also, G will also be itself be a function of G and perhaps even of Reynolds number, Prandtl number and so on and so forth, but we shall shortly see what the, what the state of affairs are. By analyzing experimental data on mass transfer with and without combustion, Spalding showed that within experimental scatter, G by G star is equal to NW by B divided by NW by B as at very, very small mass transfer rates is in fact equal to FB only. This is, this is worth noting, FB only. In other words, the equation shows that G over G star is not influenced by Reynolds number, Prandtl number or Schmidt numbers. This is what the experimental data shows both in internal flows as well as external flows, flow over cylinder, uh, flow over flat plates uh, uh, and uh, flow through the tubes and so on and so forth. In, uh, is, it may be a problem of evaporation, it may be a problem of condensation, it may be a problem of combustion. All these problems uh, for which experimental data were available, uh, Spalding showed that uh, G over G star turns within experimental scatter, say about plus minus 10 to 15 percent, uh, G by G star is, about, is a function of B only, which is a remarkable result that this ratio should not be influenced by any other quantity other than the driving force B. So uh, it is independent of Reynolds, Prandtl and Schmidt numbers. So all that we would require now is that uh, is the value of G star evaluated from uh, H cough VW equal to 0 divided by CPM and, and FB uh, to obtain G. So what are the forms of FB and that is what we want to find out. Incidentally, this book uh, Spalding DB Convective Mass Transfer uh, published in 1963 is, is a pioneering book on mass transfer. Uh, and particularly of great relevance to engineering community. So now let us see what the form of FB should be. So using computer simulations of the boundary layer equations as well as experimental data, uh, Spalding showed that uh, G over G star is equal to FB and that function FB is nothing but ln 1 plus B by B. Now if you will recall, this is the relationship which we had also predicted using Stefan flow model as well as the Kuwait flow models. Of course, Stefan flow model was uh, for diffusion mass transfer only, whereas the Kuwait flow model was for included convection in, in its fold. And therefore, uh, this relationship is unique. It does not contain any Reynolds number, Prandtl number or anything like that. We take up the issue as to whether this relationship can actually be predicted can also be derived from the Reynolds flow model, uh, just as we had shown that it uh, mathematically that the Stefan and Kuwait flow models uh, yield that relationship. So in order to do that, uh, uh, let us reconsider our T state, W state and the, uh, and the infinity state with the considered phase shown here between W and infinity state. Now here what I have done is let us consider an elemental strip here of, uh, of thickness delta y. The outer edge of that strip is y o, the inner edge of that strip is y i. And uh, let us postulate g star star as a flux uh, at the y o surface uh, which is coming in and bringing with it the properties of the y o surface. And likewise, NW plus G star star is an outgoing flux which, uh, uh, which brings with it the properties of the YI state. So this is what I have said here, G star star crosses the YO surface carrying properties of the YO surface and uh, similarly the Reynolds flux N G star star plus NW crosses YO surface carrying with it properties of the YI surface.
the physical idea behind introduction of G star star is that the real flow processes like heat conduction, mass diffusion, turbulence, etc., do behave like the Reynolds flow, but on a much smaller scale, delta y, y o minus y i tending to zero. So if I now write the mass conservation over y o and t states, then n w psi t would be the incoming flux plus g star star into psi times y o would be uh, the incoming flux from y o surface and that would equal g star star plus n w uh, into psi y i and therefore this would rearrangement of this would give me n w divided by g star star is equal to psi y o minus psi y i divided by psi y i minus psi t or this this difference is nothing but d psi y uh, and this is psi y minus psi t. So if we consider large numbers of delta y between 0 and delta of the considered phase or between infinity and w states then simply n w into summation of uh, 1 over g star star uh, would amount to integration of 0 to infinity d psi y by d uh, divided by psi y minus psi t and the integration would naturally yield ln 1 plus psi y infinity minus psi w divided by psi w minus psi t which as you know is nothing but b psi ln 1 plus b psi. So if I take this result further then uh, as b psi tends to 0 n w uh, w into infinity 1 over g star star would simply tend to b psi itself and uh, so as b psi tends to 0 w to infinity g star star raised to minus 1 would tend to b psi by n w and therefore comparison of with the observation of slide 11 what was the observation we made on slide 11 uh, g over g star is equal to n w by b, b over n w by b n w 0 is equal to f b so com comparison with that will show that as that as b psi tends to 0 the sum of g star star raised to minus 1 is nothing but the g star raised to minus 1 and hence n w equal to g b psi is equal to g star ln 1 plus b psi and g over g star is equal to uh, f b and that is equal to 1 plus ln 1 plus b psi over b psi. So this is a very interesting result that one over remember g is conductance and therefore 1 over g is resistance and therefore uh, the total resistance between uh, w and infinity states Uh, which we say is 1 over g star is nothing but sigma 1 over g star star where g star star is the resistance of the small element g bar, delta y over delta y. So we can interpret now that uh, uh, 1 over g star the resistance is the sum of the resistances to mass transfer between w and infinity states and the inverse of that is the conductance of uh, uh, for mass transfer and uh, in other words the ratio of the conductance uh, at large mass transfer rates there were conductance at small mass transfer rates or negligible mass transfer rates is simply a function of ln 1 plus b psi by b psi. This formula can be used for large mass transfer rates obtained in liquid fuel burning and in transpiration cooling as we shall see in later lectures where I will be considering problems. Uh, small b psi usually occurs uh, in combustion of solid fuels and in evaporative cooling or air conditioning and so on and so forth. But uh, where uh, in these applications b, b psi would be a, uh, less than 0.1 in, in these applications combustion of solid fuel and evaporative cooling uh, and, and air. In fact, it will be of the order of 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Whereas in transpiration cooling and liquid fuel burning, uh, or value of B psi can be, uh, can vary between 0.5 to nearly 10. So B psi can be really large in liquid fuel burning and in transpiration cooling. So we shall check how good is this formula 
from the analytical solutions we have derived so far for laminar flows as well as in turbulent flows and let us see how well this formula is so that we can confidently use it uh, at different mass transfer rate. If the mass transfer rate is very very low then of course there is no problem because g by g star will be simply 1 and uh, you would have uh, straight away there is a pro uh, no difficulty. If g by g star is simply uh, is moderate then of course this formula will work. At very very large mass transfer rate remember the definition of b psi uh, says that uh, v psi is psi infinity minus psi w divided by psi w minus psi t. So when b psi is very large Uh, psi infinity minus psi w is also large and this means that when the property in the infinity state and the w state is large we would expect the properties to vary uh, between the w and infinity state. So any departure from this formula if found in experiments. Uh, would be largely due to property variations and uh, therefore this formula is usually corrected for uh, property variations and that is the matter for discussion in the next lecture.